Okay, so welcome to the last module of your sensory experience. Do you guys have fun? Yeah. Cool. Um, hope you learned a lot. So I think it's actually really nice that we're ending our week with a sense of taste because as Lydia was saying, it's really enhanced by a lot of the other senses that you've been learning about, right? When you taste things, you are looking at your food, so the presentation of the food really matters. Um, the smell of your food, like Lydia said, really contributes to your taste experience, um, as well as a sense of touch, right? Like when you look at that bowl of delicious ramen on the top, look how many different textures there are. And, um, and also what other sensory system is that we, what other sense that we talked about in that picture that I didn't, um, I didn't just say. Do you notice anything there that also contributes to your taste experience? Sight. Sight. I said that. The, the heat. Heat. The what? The heat. the heat. Yeah. So thermal sensation, how cold your food is, warm or hot, really contributes to your um, eating experience. So. As Lydia started, um, can someone just tell me why taste is important for, for animals to have? Yeah. It takes something like okay to eat to digest. Right. And taste is evolutionarily really important because if you don't eat, you die. And if you eat bad things, you, you can die or get really sick, right? So yeah, exactly. It can, um, inform us about the nutritional status of our food, whether it's rich in protein or fat, um, and it could distinguish good food from bad food, right? So when you eat something that's moldy or bitter, um, you immediately know it. And what does the brain, oh, what do you do when you eat something good? Do you notice some reactions in your mouth? What kind of reactions do you get? Saliva, saliva. you produce a lot of saliva. Um, you chew, you want to swallow, and what, what about when you eat something bad? What kind of reactions? You throw, it out. you throw it out, you gag, right? So the brain is using your tongue to have all of these information and give you the appropriate response. Um, so can anyone help me with naming the five basic tastes? Sour. Sour, okay. Sweet. Sweet. Bitter. Bitter. Salty. Spicy. Uh, get back to that. Uh huh. Anyone? Huh? Did Did I hear something in the back? Uh, umami. Umami. Yeah. So, what is umami? Uh, savory. Yeah. It's savoriness. Yeah. You guys are really smart. So I knew you would get all of it. Um, but what about these foods? Why Why is the lemon sour? Why do we perceive it as sour? And why do we perceive a cupcake as sweet? What about these foods give them th these different perceptual tastes? We've, learning, we've been learning about all kinds of stimuli, right? So what's in these things that's giving them these tastes? Do you know? Right, so sweetness is caused by sugar. What about in the lemons? Acid, right, protons. What about, uh, that's a little hard. Um, and salt, of course, is salt. So, yeah, so chemical compounds in your foods um, are what give um, them their flavor. And in the coffee, it's um, people found that these things called phenylalanines, I can't even pronounce it, that's um, part of the, the reason that they, the coffee tastes bitter. Um, and so just briefly going over the anatomy of the taste system, you guys all know about the tongue, right? <laughs> and you guys know you have these um, little bumps on your tongue. That's, um, those things are called the taste papillae. And in each taste papillae, um, there are these little grouped cells and they make up a taste bud. And each taste bud has these taste receptor cells. And um, just like all the other sensory systems, the neurons, the peripheral neurons, are really closely listening to what these taste receptor cells are telling them. And the information goes back up to the brain. Um, OK, so yeah, this is what I was just saying. The tongue is covered with thousands of little small bumps. 
Um, each papillae, there are hundreds of taste buds on them. And humans have about 10,000 taste buds on, their, on our tongues. And each taste bud contains about 50 to 100 taste receptors. So what do we mean by basic taste? Can anyone tell me why grapefruit is not considered a basic taste? Um, you, can, you can think a little bit and talk to your neighbor. Um, so why do we only have five basic tastes? Why does smell, you have so many smells. Um, you can taste a lot of different things, but why do scientists say that we have five basic tastes? Talk to your neighbors and then regroup. Okay, cool. So what did you guys share with each other? Do you, yeah. It might be like by like the chemicals that it has. So like grapefruit has certain chemicals. Um, mm -hmm. Like grapefruit has certain chemicals that are like used in there. Okay, cool. Anyone has any other ideas about why we have, we categorize them as, yeah. Uh-huh. Cool, so you guys are focused on the stimulus side. What about the other side of sensory perception? Well, so we have, we call them five basic tastes because we have specialized molecules to taste them. So if there was a receptor for chalk, chalk would be a basic taste, right? So there are specialized receptors like this uh, sweet receptor, um, it's two kind of similar proteins that attach themselves together, and they're specialized for tasting sugars. And another type of receptor, they look a lot different. Um, they're also ex expressed on the membrane of your taste receptor cells, and they're specialized in tasting um, salt, sodium chloride, for example, and so on and so on. So you're only having five basic tastes because Molecularly, that's what you're able to taste. Um, and do you, can you think of another basic taste that would be nice to have that we haven't talked about that we regular eat, that we regularly eat? Yeah. Spicy foods. Spicy foods. We actually do have a receptor for spiciness, um, and, you know the name and you know the name of it. Does anyone know? Yeah, the, the chemical is capsaicin, and it activates a specific receptor that also makes you feel heat. Mm -hmm. I don't think spicy just causes irritation. It does cause irritation, but it also gives you the sensation of hotness, right? Heat. So the trip V1 receptor, V1. Um, so far, your taste perception is localized also in the bone, but it's not far of the Mm -hmm. Right. So um, the basic taste that I was thinking of was fat, right? Fat is really, really nutritionally rich. And when you eat fatty foods, you can taste it. And scientists are actually starting to discover some proteins that um, are activated by fatty acids, for example. Um, and just to show you, I don't want you to only look at diagrams. So this is um, a real taste bud expressing some fluorescent proteins. And what to note here is similar to the olfactory neurons, these taste receptor cells only express one type of taste receptor. So in any given taste bud, you can have multiple taste receptor cells expressing the salty or the sweet or the umami, but 
these receptors are never co-expressed or expressed in the same cell. They're in different cells. And in that way, your brain can tell when you have um, eaten something bitter or salty or sweet. It's kind of a nice label line system here. Um, so once you taste your food on the tongue, your inf the information travels up to the central nervous system through these um, peripheral sensory neurons, and they project to an area in your brainstem called the medulla oblongata, and specifically it's called the nucleus of the solitary tract. This is all information you don't really need to know, but eventually the taste information is um, processed by a higher order brain region called the insulate cortex, or gustatory cortex. Um, so, taste is not just for the mouth. Can you um, think of any other areas of your body or organs that it would be nice to have taste respe receptors? Any other organs that you think might need to have taste information? Stomach, Stomach yeah. Um, and not only do we have taste receptors in our intestines and um, the GI tract, we have taste receptors in the trachea, in the bile duct, and we don't really know what they're doing, but for the stomach and the um, intestines, it's really intuitive, right? You can inform your brain through your, uh, the, through your peripheral nervous system what you just ate, what the nutritional status is, and you can start making hormones and digestive enzymes and telling your brain that you're full or you're not full. So yeah, taste receptors are not just for your tongue. Um, and in the animal kingdom, you can also see that pattern, right? For example, a fish living in water can have taste buds all over its body because taste dents are um, water soluble. And um, an octopus has suck taste buds on their suckers. Um, butterflies taste with their feet. Um, these animals also have an amazing number of taste buds. So as Lydia said, even if you have fewer taste buds but your sensitivity is really low, then you can maybe also be a pretty good taster. Um, interestingly, some animals have also lost a sense of taste. So um, cats, dolphins, vampire bats, birds have lost their sweet taste receptor. So their sweet taste receptors are not functional. Um, can you think of what these animals have in common and why they might not need their sweet receptors? What do they usually eat? Meat. meat. Yeah. So they have really high, um, they rely on meat mostly for their diet. This vampire bat, I guess they eat blood. <laughs> um, birds eat, more, well, so birds is interesting because their ancestors, what are birds' ancestors? Dinosaurs. dinosaurs. And dinosaurs, their, their ancestral dinosaur, uh, ancestors who were dinosaurs were carnivores and um, even though a lot of birds do eat fruit and whatever now, um, they have lost the ability to taste sweet um, or sugars. Um, but interestingly, in the hummingbird, they were able to regain their sense of sweet um, for uh, sugar by modifying their umami receptor. So instead of having their umami receptor activating in response to amino acids, the receptors um, now activate in response to sugars. So that's a cool evolutionary adaptation that um, I wanted to share with you. Okay, so we're gonna go through a miracle fruit taste altering exercise. Has anyone heard of miracle fruit? Um, has anyone tried it? No one has tried it? Okay, if you know what miracle fruit does, please don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, we're gonna go through the exercise and come and, and uh, discuss as a group what you think it does. Um, but basically, it's a it's a fruit found in West Africa, and it's um, part of this little bush. And the active ingredient is called miraculin. It's this um, protein shown here. And um, before you do your exercise, so I wanted to just introduce a little bit of um, pharmacology. So. A lot of times when neuroscientists or scientists want to study a receptor, they use agonists and antagonists. 
So um, imagine you have a drug and there's a specific receptor. You might have some normally occurring substances that can activate this receptor. But if you want to study it further or activate it in a really robust way, you might want to design an agonist um, that's not found naturally but activates this receptor really well. Or you might want to design something that blocks that receptor in order to prevent it from um, activating the cell. So I want you to think about this and think about whether miraculin is acting as an agonist or an antagonist and whether which taste receptor it's acting on. Um, so you're going to, on the last page of your worksheet, you're going to have a score sheet. And um, what you're going to do is taste each of the items that we provided you in the order shown on this page. So first you'll taste the goldfish, and then you're going to rate the, um, each taste that I've listed here on a scale of 0 to 5. 0 being you can't even taste it at all, and 5 being extremely intense. So maybe for the goldfish, you can put, you know, zero for, well, you, you do it. <laughs> and um, after you taste everything and score everything, you can um, take a Miracle Fruit tablet that we'll give you. Um, it takes a little while, just coat your tongue with this tablet, melt it. It has um, a slight sugary flavor, but that's not from the miraculin, that's actually from the additive. So wait a few minutes until the taste goes away and then taste everything again in this order and then rate um, their um, taste intensity. Um, we do have a disclaimer that if you have any fruit allergies, please don't participate. Um, and that, you know, I'm gonna give it away, but don't eat too many lemons afterwards. <laughs> and when you're doing this exercise, please consider these questions and discuss with your group. Um, does the Miracle Fruit Tablets have a strong taste it by itself? And what does that mean for how it acts? Um, what happens to your taste perception after eating the Miracle Fruit Tablet? And what do you think, how do you think Miraculin, the active compound, is achieving this effect? 